he came in with great promise that i will faithfully and conscientiously discharge my duties as prime minister a young prime minister who wanted to take india into the 21st century but rajiv gandhi's attempts to appease orthodox muslims and hindus and his alleged role in the bofor scandal led to the end of his eventful 5 year term as prime minister Rajiv's political inexperience saw him fritter away the historic mandate he had received in the 1984 elections and he opened the doors for the first minority government in India. In the summer of 1988, after a year of the Bofors scandal hitting the headlines, a by-election in the old Nehru family home city of Allahabad gave a hint of which way the political winds were blowing in the by election to the allahabad lok sabha constituency vp singh who had resigned from the cabinet contested the election as an independent candidate and won as all the opposition parties rallied around him this victory was seen as a clear verdict against rajiv gandhi on the bofors issue and it also became a catalyst for opposition unity As the general elections approached in 1989, Rajiv Gandhi faced three challenges. First, a colleague turned adversary, VP Singh demolished his Mr. Clean image by alleging deep-seated corruption. Second, Rajiv's attempts to capitalize on the religious sentiments of both Hindu and Muslim voters backfired. The Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP exploited the situation to polarize Hindu voters in its favor and Muslim voters drifted away from the Congress. Lastly, the rise of a series of regional parties weakened the Congress. In large parts of the country, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Tripura, Assam, Punjab and Haryana, the Congress lost power to opposition parties. Apart from these political challenges, Rajiv was also facing criticism for the worsening situation in Sri Lanka. Hundreds of Indian soldiers were being killed as they were sent to the troubled north of the island country, ostensibly on a peacekeeping mission as the Indian Peacekeeping Force or IPKF. Here they were facing Tamil rebels and fighting in a foreign country. This would have devastating consequences in years to come. with Rajiv Gandhi's assassination. Meanwhile, in the run up to 1989, even as Rajiv was facing all these challenges, the opposition was strengthening its case. VP Singh's Allahabad victory seemed to have galvanized them. In September 1988, a nationwide coalition of opposition parties called the National Front was set up to forge electoral alliances against the Congress. although the bjp and the left party stayed out of the front opposition parties further consolidated their position in october 1988 with the formation of the janta dal headed by vp singh the new party a force mainly in uttar pradesh bihar and karnataka became the nucleus of the anti rajiv coalition But the National Front realized that it needed the BJP support to defeat the Congress in the Hindi speaking states. The BJP was gaining ground on the back of the Ram Janmabhoomi movement launched by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad or the VHP which was agitating for the construction of a temple for Lord Ram in Ayodhya. Meanwhile, the Babri Masjid Movement Coordination Committee and Organization of Muslims demanded that the dispute be settled in court. The situation was tense. communal sentiments were inflamed and riots broke out across the country in january 1989 just weeks before the lok sabha elections the vhp announced the shilanyas or foundation stone laying ceremony for the new ram temple in ayodhya it also said that processions would take place where bricks inscribed with the words shri ram would be carried through the streets The VHP thus took the campaign for the proposed Ram Temple in Ayodhya to villages and cities across the country. Unnerved by the growing tide in the BJP's favor, Rajiv once again played the Hindu card. On the 3rd of November 1989, he launched the Congress campaign for the Lok Sabha elections from Ayodhya 
and promised to usher in Ram Rajya if re-elected. Then, in a very controversial move, the government allowed the VHP to perform the Shilanyas in Ayodhya, which further alienated Muslim voters from the Congress. While Rajiv desperately wooed Hindu fundamentalists, things weren't easy for Singh either, and he too felt compelled to cooperate with the BJP. The looks of her elections, held from the 22nd to 26th of November, were a tightrope walk for him as he tried to balance the equation between the Janta Dal and the BJP. To secure Muslim and secular votes to start with, Singh's Janta Dal did not forge an alliance with the BJP. Instead, the two parties opted for a seat adjustment understanding in the Hindi-speaking states to prevent a split in the anti-Congress vote. The elections delivered a hung parliament. The Congress won 197 seats, a steep decline from the 415 in 1984, and Singh's Janta Dal barely secured 143 seats. Major regional parties, the TDP and the DMK, were routed. But the BJP gained the most, winning 85 seats. The left parties got 53. Although heading the single largest party, Rajiv Gandhi decided against taking a claim to form the government. On the 2nd of December 1989, VP Singh took oath as Prime Minister, leading India's first minority government. The BJP and the left parties, representing two ends of the political spectrum, supported Singh's government from the outside without joining it. While the minority National Front government was set up to fail, Rajiv too lost out. His compelling promise of preparing India for the 21st century with modern education, technology and economic growth was left incomplete. Instead, he bungled and blundered on through the political landscape, never recovering.